Hello, this video will be on how to set up your reaction for stirring and then heating. So if we're only stirring our reaction vessel, we don't need to put a lab jack underneath it, because that's only really for raising and lowering the heat. So we can leave it on the floor of the fume hood, and we're going to make sure it's plugged in at the back of the stirrer, and then wind the cable around the framing here, and that just removes it out of the way of any glassware that we have and also as we'll see later on with the lab jack stops it from getting tangled in there. Once we've got it plugged in and switched on it's always good practice to check the temperature in the stirring dials as these may have been left on by a previous user and you don't want it to be inadvertently heating. So once in position we can lower our clamping arrangement to just sit in a nice central position so that we can get efficient stirring. If it's off center, you find that the stirrer bar goes a bit crazy and is disrupted. We need to make sure that we're sliding the stirrer bar into our glassware instead of dropping it from a height as that can damage it a bit. And when we're stirring it, we select a moderate rate. So again, we don't disrupt our reaction mixture too much. If we wish to heat our stirring reaction, we'll then have to raise our apparatus up with a lab jack and that's so that in an event where the heater needs to be removed immediately say the reaction is going out of control or we just wish to effectively remove the heat we can then lower it very easily so we're going to select a nice high point on the framing and then we're going to raise the lab jack up without the hot plate on it initially as this will save you straining your hand as it can be a bit heavy and then at a decent height, we can pop the stirrer hot plate onto our lab jack, leaving a little bit of room so that we can easily raise and lower this. Again, you can see how the winding of the wire around the frame removes it out of the way of the lab jack, which can cut the cable there. And we're gonna add a heating block in, which allows us to increase the contact between the glassware and the heating element of the hot plate. And we wanna raise it up to establish good contact with the glassware here. So you'll see in a minute, we want to be able to rotate it, but we can't raise the heating block up and down, as this would mean that there's poor contact and so inefficient heating will occur. So in this zoomed in shot, you can see that we're rotating it, but we're not able to raise or lower the heating block. What's important as well is that we don't wind the lab jack up and our whole apparatus too high as that will put strain onto the glassware and the clamping apparatus. So you can see here, if I raise up the lab jack, it's raising and lowering our system. We can see it moving. Now that can increase the risk of damage to our glassware. Likewise, if we have it too low, then we're gonna have poor contact with the heating block and the heating is gonna be inefficient. It's gonna be slow, it's not gonna be even. So we wanna be able to have it raised so they can sit comfortably maintaining a good contact so we get good efficient heating but at the same time it's not straining any of the clamping arrangement or putting strain on the glassware. 